Hello, my name is Dr. Ukiri Richard. I am here to continue the podcast on basic cardiology. Today we are going to talk about chest pain and collapse. The, the case I'm going to talk about today is about a 39-year-old boy that collapsed in the town suddenly. He was the emergency medical care was alerted and on arrival the patient was okay his, his vital parameters were stable and he was, he was brought to the hospital the patient was acutely ill and also complained about recurrent head headache in the recent past with sometimes thorax a pressure on the thorax that we are not triggered by exertions there, was no, there were no past medical history of note. In the cardiovascular risk factors, he's a smoker, he has hypercholesterolemia, and a positive family history. The father actually had a heart infarction, myocardial infarction, at the age of 55. Okay, for, the, for correction, is it was, it, the patient is a girl, not a boy. The only medica, med, medication she takes now is the oral contraceptive pills. And sometimes she takes analgesic when she has migraine headaches. On examination, the significant findings was we had tachycardia 120 per minute regular, blood pressure 220 to 120 millimeters of mercury, uh, jugular venous uh, vein, venous pressure was a bit elevated. There was light congestion of the jugular, jugular vein. There were basal crepitations bilaterally in the lung fields. An ECG was done, which I'm going to read out to you the, the results. The ECG findings are th uh, that those of sinus rhythm, heart rate 120 per minute. There were significant ST elevation in 2, 3 AVF and V3 to V6. Also in 1 and V2, but not as significant. So this CG diagnosis is a generalized ST elevation which is formally STEMI with a differential diagnosis of perimyocarditis. So my question is what test are you going to re request for now? Well I'll request for laboratory tests CK, LDH, troponin, electrolyte, coagulation states, full blood count, thyroid status, renal function tests, and urea. Pathologic findings were raised CK, CKMB, and troponin. There was slight hyponatremia and um, TSH was slightly elevated. The coagulation and creatinine full blood count were all normal. I will also order for an immediate cardiac uh, coronary angiography. My question is. While preparing for the coronary angiography, how will you attend, take care of the patient? What will you do for the patient? Answer. The patient needs to be monitored. Oxygen 2 to 4 liters per minute. Beta blocker, for example, metoprolol, 5 mg intravenously, de despite the uh, crepitations because of the severe hypertension. Also, you give aspirin 250 or 500 mg intravenously. You give heparin. 5,000 international unit, international unit, you give loading dose of clopidogrel or prasugrel, which is 60, 600 mg for clopidogrel and 60 mg for prasugrel. Then control the viral parameters while you are preparing for the coronary angiography. Now, as you were preparing for the coronary angiography, the patient wasn't clinically. The oxygen saturation that was measured transcutaneously was 82% and the patient was becoming exhausted respiratorily. Respiratory rate was 30 per minute. In the blood gas analysis, you found the oxygen partial pressure to be 53 millimeters of mercury and the carbon dioxide 25 millimeters of mercury. Despite the beta blocker thera thera therapy, the blood pressure remained unchanged by at 240 to 120 millimeters of mercury. What would you do next for this patient? Yeah, the answer is that this patient needs to be intubated. Also, you have to give do medical uh, medicated blood pressure 
reduction, either with urapidil, initially 12.5 mg intravenously. You can also give nitroglycerin 50 mg in 50 ml at 0 0.5 to 5 mg per hour. That is through a perfusor syringe pump. You can also give clonidine, which is catapresin, at 0 0.045 mg per milliliter. That means at a perfusor rate of 0 0.9 to 2.7 mg per hour. You can also give metoprolol 5 mg intravenously. Enalapril can also be given 1.25 to 5 mg intravenously or dihydralazine at 6.25 to 12.5 mg intravenously but very very slowly. Okay, after intubation and uh, treatment um, and therapy with 5 mg metoprolol and 25 mg urapidil, the blood pressure was reduced to 180 to 100 mm of mercury. The patient's oxygen saturation, the uh, oxygen, sorry, the patient was oxygenated with 40% oxygen and with a breathing rate of 14 per minute at a PEEP of 8 millibar and minute volume of 7.5 liter. In the blood gas check, the oxygen partial pressure rose to 135 millimeters of mercury and the carbon dioxide uh, was at 35 millimeters of mercury. What do you do next? Then I will carry out the coronary angiography. Now you did the coronary angiography and you found normal right and left coronary arteries with good timid three flow. There were no relevant stenosis or occlusion of the coronary arteries. And there were no indication for a plaque rupture, spasm or distal embolization. So you went ahead to do the level cardiography. Here you saw a globally reduced left ventricular function with regional contractility disturbances. The basal part of the left ventricle shows a normal or maybe hypercontractile function, while the apical part shows a significant hypocontractility function, resulting in the so-called apical ballooning. Now, my question is, does the finding of the coronary angiography explain the function of the left ventricle? The answer is no. After we have excluded relevant stenosis or occlusion in the coronary artery, then a coronary heart disease as a cause of the left ventricular, left ventricular dysfunction has been ruled out. So my question now is, which other possible causes of an acute left ventricular systolic dysfunction are you thinking of now? Well, it could be an acute virus myocarditis, it could be toxic damage, maybe post-coronal emboli embolism or acute valvular insufficiency. And the question now is, from all these possible causes you have said, is the presentation of this patient likely to be caused by any of them? No, no, no. The usual forms of cardiomyopathy typically cause global reduction of left ventricular function without significant regional contractility differences. So now, my question is, from the symptoms combination you are presented with now, what do you think is happening? Answer. Well, the symptom complex combination of tachycardia, hypertensive dysregulation, ST elevation, and apical ballooning or apical reduction of the left ventricular function is typical for a catecholamine-induced cardiomyopathy. Please, could you name the possible causes of catecholamine with induced cardiomyopathy? Okay. One, um, in, when there's a central regulation disturbance like in head injury. Two, if you have a catecholamine producing tumor like fake chromocytoma. Three, psychogenic causes, for example, Takutsubo cardiomyopathy. This is a sickness that happens usually after a severe emotional stress like death of a relative, 
road traffic accident, court case, and so on. And typically, with a combination of ST elevation in ECG and apical hypo to echinacea of the left ventricle. It is called takutsubo, which, which in Jap uh, is a Japanese word meaning tinten fish phala, because the resulting form of the left ventricle in systole resembles the Japanese tinten fish phala. So what other diagnosis or the diagnostic measures would you do for this patient? Well, I would check the catecholamine in urine and blood. Here you are going to see a significantly elevated levels of methanephrine, adrenaline, and noadrenaline in blood and in urine. I will also do some diagnostic procedure like abdomen sonography or abdomen CT. So you have done the abdomen CT and you saw a space occupying lesion from with the size of 5 by 6 cm in the adrenal gland left with a central hypodensity. What additional treatment would you suggest? Well, first of all, we'll do a medicinal stabilization out with alpha blocker, for example, phenobenzamine, and thereafter beta block blocker, for example, bisoprolol. You are all, I will also recommend operative removal of the fake chromocytoma. Don't forget, cave MEN2, that's M-E-N-2. A, you have C-cell carcinoma of the thyroid gland, fake chromocytoma, primary hyperparathyroidism, with or without B, ganglion neuromatosis, and morphanoid growth. What do you have to say about the prognosis of catecholamine induced cardiomyopathy? Answer the prognosis is very good because most patients recover fully after removal of the pathologic agent. The ventricle function normalized within weeks. The exact pathophysiology, pathophysiological connection between the that causes the contraction disturbance is still not known. It's either due to repeated vasospasms of the epicardial coronary arteries, spasms of the myocardial microcirculation, or direct, direct toxic effects of on the myocardium. Any of these can cause transitory or transient left ventricular contractility disturbance. It is also thought that the apical myocardium are very more sensitive to the cardiolamine effect in when compared to that of the basal part of the heart, which is why it comes to this typical ballooning. Actually, in, in that ECG, what actually gave you doubt? The, that's it, the ECG showed a generalized ST elevation, which actually covers more than the area of a single coronary vessel 